Many of you have probably heard of preeclampsia or eclampsia in pregnancy. And did you know that those conditions can affect the brain and potentially be life-threatening? Today, I want to dive into one of the most dramatic and possibly life-threatening conditions in obstetrics and neurology. It's called PRESS, Posterior Reversible Encephalopathy Syndrome. But to understand PRESS, you must first understand its common trigger, eclampsia, a severe complication of pregnancy. We'll talk about what it is, how it presents, what's happening in the brain, and how we treat it to save lives. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 27-year-old female who presented to the emergency department by EMS after suffering a seizure at home. She's 34 weeks pregnant with her first baby and has had no problems during her prenatal care. At her last OB appointment, her blood pressure was 140 over 90, but upon arrival to the emergency department, her blood pressure was 170 over 110. I mentioned for two days prior to this, she began to develop a severe worsening posterior occipital headache, as well as progressive blurry vision. Now, many of you guessed the answer of HELP syndrome, H-E-L-L-P, another life-threatening condition in pregnancy associated with preeclampsia. HELP is characterized by hemolysis, low platelets, and elevated liver enzymes. And those are the hallmarks of that condition. And I mentioned that in our patient, her CBC and liver enzymes, as well as her coagulation studies were all normal. So these laboratory studies point away from HELP being the diagnosis. What exactly is preeclampsia and eclampsia? It's a hypertensive disorder of pregnancy when your blood pressure gets too high. And eclampsia is a progression of preeclampsia when the patient develops seizures. A medical emergency and we need to treat it immediately to save the mother and the baby. It's rare but deadly and occurs in one in every two to three thousand pregnancies. Preeclampsia starts with high blood pressure, 140 over 90 or higher, as well as leakage of protein into the urine. Why do you get protein in your urine? The high blood pressure damages the kidney filter. Normally, our kidneys can properly filter out the protein so they don't leak into the urine. But if those filters get damaged, you can spill protein in your urine and is one of the signs of preeclampsia. You remember, I said our patient's creatinine was slightly elevated at 1.2. That's why at every prenatal visit that you have, your blood pressure and your urine are checked. This helps us detect these problems and treat them early and is another reason why prenatal care is so important. If a woman with preeclampsia develops seizures, she has then progressed to eclampsia. And if seizures begin, the risk to the mother's brain and body skyrockets. Now enter PRESS, Posterior Reversible Encephalopathy Syndrome. It's a neurological condition triggered by eclampsia. The brain begins to swell due to leaking blood vessels. And it particularly happens in the occipital lobes and the parietal lobes of the brain. And that's the part of the brain that controls your vision. The name actually says it all. Posterior, meaning the back part of your brain, reversible, meaning if we catch it early, it can be completely reversed, encephalopathy, brain dysfunction, and syndrome, which is a cluster of symptoms and not a singular disease. Now, PRESS doesn't just happen in pregnancy. It can occur in any patient that has severe hypertension, autoimmune disease, kidney failure, or even treatment to particular types of chemotherapies. But in terms of how it develops in pregnant women, eclampsia is the most common associated cause. The symptoms of press and eclampsia overlap, and the patients typically present with severe headaches, visual changes, meaning blurred vision, visual loss, or even seeing some flashing light, altered mental status or confusion, seizures, which are often generalized tonic-clonic seizures, as well as elevated blood pressure. In press, patients may temporarily lose their vision due to swelling in that occipital lobe of the brain. This is called cortical blindness, and it is often completely reversible. And depending on the severity, the patients can have other symptoms, ataxia, numbness or weakness, or even being in a coma. Let's break down the mechanism of how this actually happens. You see, your brain adjusts with something called autoregulation. It's pretty smart. Meaning if there are changes in your blood pressure with high or low blood pressure, it will maintain the same blood flow throughout the brain by squeezing or opening the blood vessels. But in press, because of the severe acute high blood pressure, autoregulation mechanism fails. That means the blood vessels in the brain no longer have control. 
they become leaky and they can leak fluid into the surrounding brain tissue and cause swelling in the brain. The posterior part of the brain in the parietal and occipital lobes, those are the most vulnerable and we think it's because of fewer numbers of sympathetic fibers in that part of the brain, in that part of the brain which regulate vascular flow. The result, swelling in the back part of the brain can cause visual loss, posterior headaches, confusion, and even seizures. The good news is if you catch it and treat it early, all that swelling can be completely reversible and the brain can return to normal. So how do we make the diagnosis? You have to be extremely vigilant with clinical suspicion. Patients that are pregnant with high blood pressure and neurological changes, especially when associated with seizures, should have a high threshold of potentially having press. Then we get an MRI of the brain to confirm the diagnosis. A CAT scan can be helpful sometimes, but an MRI is way more sensitive. We look at particular sequences on the MRI, including T2 and flares, to look at the hyperintensity in the brain that we suspect may be swelling. And most often it occurs in the bilateral, meaning both sides, parietal and or occipital lobes. The laboratory studies are important to help support our diagnosis to look for protein in the urine, to check for kidney function, as well as to look for low platelets and liver enzyme problems, which could potentially be associated with help. But once we think mom has it, how do we treat it? Number one is seizure control with IV magnesium sulfate. This is first line treatment to help treat as well as prevent seizures. What the heck does magnesium do? It's actually a central depressant and inhibits neuromuscular transmission. Basically, it reduces the excitation of the brain cells. If seizures persist despite magnesium, benzodiazepines are often used as well. Second is blood pressure control. You probably guessed that already. Labetalol, hydralazine, and nifedipine are all medications that we may use to help lower the blood pressure. And you don't want to reduce the blood pressure too fast because rapid drops can reduce cerebral perfusion. And the third and the most crucial part of the treatment is delivery of the baby. You take the baby? You see, the placenta is the root cause of the problem in eclampsia and preeclampsia. Once the placenta is removed, the blood pressure and brain function usually improve quickly. The early recognition and treatment, most patients go on to make a complete neurological recovery, and our patient did the same. Even better news is that the baby was also delivered healthy. So the one thing that I want you to remember, in a pregnant person, vision changes, high blood pressure, and headaches are not normal. It could be a sign of a medical emergency. Knowing the signs can save a life. So remember, press and eclampsia are rare, but knowing the symptoms can potentially save a life. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week, and I'll go through another case. And don't forget to sign up for my newsletter so you can have healthcare information delivered straight to your inbox and other interesting facts every single week.